Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. One really common thing that comes up in practice is how to help patients who are beginning to acquire resistance to targeted therapies. So, for example, erlotinib or fatinib, the two drugs that we have to use for EGFR patients, they both can work really well. We've talked about how they can improve progression-free survival and overall survival for a fatinib, but ultimately they don't cure cancer. And so patients will develop resistance to these treatments, usually after one to two years. There are patients who stay on longer, but the, the median is, is between one and two years. So what do we do with uh, patients who are in this predicament? There's, there's several different themes that, um, that have uh, come out, and I think one important one is to think about doing a biopsy to understand what's going on in the cancer at that time. Just like doing molecular testing is so important at the time of diagnosis, when a cancer has become resistant to a targeted therapy, molecular testing is also quite important. It allows you to see what has changed in the cancer, in the way that the cancer is signaling, what's different. And in the case of EGFR, we've learned a lot from biopsies about how patients get around drugs like erlotinib. And the most common thing that's found is a specific resistance mutation in EGFR called T790M. And what's really exciting uh, currently is that there are some very effective drugs coming out, which uh, I think have a good chance of actually being FDA approved within the next year, that target T790M. So if you find that your patient who's become resistant on erlotinib now has a new biopsy and has T790M as that reason behind the acquired resistance, there's going to be a new class of drugs that you can switch them to and oftentimes get another response and another long duration of response. T790 mutations present, and that essentially blocks the activation of, uh, um, or bl blocks the uh, first line TKIs from uh, uh, working on the receptor. Uh, there are new agents, uh, one of which now has the name rosalatinib, uh, Clovis compound CO1686, and the um, AstraZeneca compound AZ9291, both of which have shown clear cut activity in uh, those with acquired T790 resistance. Now, it used to be uh, thought to roughly level out at about 40, 45 percent of the population. More recent data suggests that it's about 50 to 60 percent of those uh, with acquired resistance that uh, develop a T790 mutation. So uh, it's becoming standard practice now, particularly uh, with the, the opening of many trials uh, addressing these uh, uh, acquired resistance mutations to re-biopsy uh, patients. We didn't routinely do that in the past, but uh, because these uh, agents are so active, so relatively active in uh, individuals with T790, it's, uh, I think it's become almost standard. Uh, T790 negative is a big challenge. Um, it includes uh, patients with CMED amplification. It used to be thought uh, about 20 percent, probably closer to 5 percent. There are rare individuals whose tumors transform to small cell. Uh, there are those who have developed HER2. And again, we have very specific agents that are available for each of these abnormalities. So uh, whether some of the specific CMET inhibitors may actually work in those with CMET amplification. Crisotinib, which is approved for uh, alk uh, positive tumors, was actually first developed as a CMET inhibitor, and there are anecdotal reports of uh, crisotinib or similar agents uh, working on CMET uh, amplification. HER2, again, uh, afatinib may be pr uh, the preferred agent in that setting, or um, agents like trastuzumab, uh, um, TDM1. And small cell mandates chemotherapy in a toposide platinum combination um, with or without continuation of the uh, TKI. So uh, the nature of the um, acquired resistance abnormality will generally dictate how we uh, address these folks. Those with T790 mutation, uh, 
will frequently enjoy responses that are as robust, even, if not even more robust, than we've observed with the uh, first, uh, first line TKI. So it's, it's really a brave new world. We've never, uh, uh, this is the first time I've seen salvage therapy in this uh, setting of EGFR mutation work so well. When we think about what has been done to combat acquired resistance, the first big breakthrough was a combination called a fatinib cetuximab. And a fatinib is the second generation inhibitor that is approved for first line use. As a single agent, it's actually not that great of a treatment for resistance. So I think that's an important point to know about. If you have a patient who's been on erlotinib and then starts to acquire resistance, a fat nib isn't really a treatment for resistance. Um, a fat nib is an option to erlotinib in the first line setting, but once you get resistant, a fat nib on its own doesn't have a lot of activity. But when you combine a fat nib and cetuximab, which is a monoclonal antibody against EGFR, that combination does seem to have a pretty good level of activity in erlotinib resistant patients. I think one of the hardest things about the afatinib cetuximab regimen is the toxicity. Both of the drugs have similar overlapping toxicities, especially of rash, uh, but also diarrhea. So the side effects of the afatinib cetuximab combination regimen have limited its use. Um, but the trials are uh, fairly clear that um, approximately 30 to 35 percent of patients will have a nice response, and oftentimes it can be quite durable. The um, third generation agents were also developed with an intent to um, be active against the major secondary mutation for resistance that we see in exon 20, the so-called T790M mutation, which occurs in about 50 to 60 percent of patients with known EGFR mutations after exposure to first, second uh, generation TKIs. So it's a major issue with regard to the mechanism of resistance, and so uh, as a target, it, it is of high priority. And that's where rosalitinib and AZD9291 come in. Those are the two lead third generation compounds, which we saw some very exciting data at, at ASCO this year. Um, and uh, both of them have been evaluated both in T790M negative and positive. We focused on the T790M positive population because the, the level of activity in that population is quite remarkable. Uh, remember, these are patients who have typically been on uh, a first or second generation TKI and then at the time of progression transition to that. And response rates are, are north of 50 percent to PFS is, you know, a, a around a year or, or greater in this setting. Um, and um, the, the majority of that benefit is seen in the T790M positive population. Now, I will point out that these drugs also seem to have a lower level of activity in T, the T790M negative population. So, uh, I don't think we should necessarily throw them out in the negative population, but the current development is really focusing on T790M positive uh, patients. Getting back to the relative selectivity to mutant EGFR, there has been less typical skin and GI toxicity associated with these sorts of agents, um, uh, which, is, which is a management advantage, actually. Um, a couple of unique toxicities with regard to rosalitinib, there's about a 20 percent rate of grade 3 hyperglycemia, which was not anticipated from the mouse um, uh, preclinical data. Um, there is a metabolite that seems to inhibit the insulin receptor that may be responsible for this. Um, having known that from the early experience, um, uh, there's been a developmental strategy to deal with that. So in the early institution of metformin uh, has largely been a, a successful strategy, and I don't see the hyperglycemia as necessarily a deal breaker in this setting given the relative level of activity. Now, interestingly, AZD9291, um, we've not seen any hyperglycemia with that agent. Um, there's been a low level of uh, QTC issues with, with both drugs, a very low level of ILD-like reactions with, two, with, with, with both agents. So 
you know, again, a, a pretty impressive level of activity and a relatively impressive lack of significant toxicity with these agents, kind of the best of both worlds. So I think, you know,